tools we need for this repair is your flashlight, flathead screwdriver, a ratchet, we'll need a Phillips bit, a Torx bit, and you also need a quarter inch nut driver. You can use a drill like we used here, or you can use hand tools, whatever your preference is. All right, what we have here is a Maytag dishwasher. Uh, the complaint is that the wiring harness here will sometimes melt to the rubber insulation here. In this particular case, it melted extremely bad here and the wires actually burnt up. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for proper voltage. Remember to also turn off the water. What we're doing is replacing the main console, the control board, and the bimetal. Since we're replacing these parts, we're gonna do it real simple by just changing over and looking at the old one and putting in the new control board on the new console, which is very simple. First thing you're gonna do is just line it up. You got your two pluses here. Just push in. Make sure your ribbon cable is down nice and flush and push down. It's in there nice and tight. It's how it's supposed to be. There's a little play to it. But the one thing you do want to do before you hook it up, before you push it down and insert it, is do connect the ribbon cable. It'll make things a lot easier. Just simple push in. There's not really a snap or anything, but you know as long as it goes on there nice and flush. And after it goes on, just nice little push down. You hear it snap and that's how it's in. Now after installing that, next thing you will do, the new bimetal here, just slide it right into the little bracket, which is right here. It's nice and simple. And that's that. Um, now your console will be ready with the two parts that were installed. The only other thing that we'll need to change over here that we are not changing is the door latch which is very, very simple to put on also. It's just two little clasps here that snap on. Just disconnect from the old console. And I'll turn this around for you. Basically go straight down. Simple as that. Always do make note though of where your wires are going. Make sure that you're using maybe your phone to take a little video or just to make sure that you know your colors of where they're going. Now they're usually keyed, so you really can't mix them up, but it's just a good thing to have. First thing I'm gonna do is remove the, the restrictor plate that's covering the, the hard line of power coming into it. Just takes a torque bit on this particular model. Removing that, make sure you put this in a safe place. After removing the plate, what you want to do is take off your wire nuts here, which are holding your power lines in. Next is your ground here. Um, this is just a Phillips head screw. A lot of the wires down here that you're gonna replace if you cannot uninstall the dishwasher. Um, make sure you make note of where these harnesses are plugged in. Again, they're all keyed, so it's not like you can put a harness in the wrong spot. Just make note of the colors of where they go. Remove this clamp here. Just take any type of flathead or Phillips head and just push in these two pieces here. Pull up and out. Uh, you will have ground wire here that has a quarter inch screw. Just want to remove that. Make sure you put the screw somewhere safe. It does not come with a new one. The bottom one here has two little clamps here that just slide right in. Just depress both of them um, and it slides right out. Uh, nice and simple there. Now what you can do to get this out of your way is you can start 
disconnecting things from your old board and your old console. Um, they all simply just pull right out. Just take out the brown harness and the yellow harness. You will need to take this old control board out. Push down, pull out, down and out. Now these can be discarded and thrown off to the side. The next disconnect, the harness going into the dispenser here. Pull out and down, nice and simple. Next you can uh, disconnect your harness going into your water valve, which is a brown wire, brown harness. Next, remove your blue with red stripe, your red. There's also a ground wire there, which will need to be removed with a quarter inch nut driver here. Next, disconnect the harness going to the float switch, which is also brown wire. Two little clamps down here. Just stick a type of pointy object that you can open up the clamp with. And what you'll have is two brown wires going into a micro switch. Which can move and go out here. Just pull those off. If you do the repair without removing the dishwasher, there's four harnesses here that you're gonna have to reach under and do blind. Basically, you're gonna have these two harnesses here. The two single ones, the red and white with the red stripe, these will go to your heater. The white with red stripe will go on the left side. It's a little bit longer. I mean, it goes around the right of the sump assembly, and this will be your last wire going around and up. This one will be next to it, up into the heating element. If you open the dishwasher and look at your heating element, on the bottom of the tub, you'll be able to see about where they're located. They have a nice round tube going down, and you push them right up and in. You just wanna make sure they're nice and snug on there. The other two here, If you wanna look at this here, if you decompress these two push buttons here on the side, should slide right off. And the yellow one is just like the control board. Taking those harnesses, putting those on and taking them off. There'll be a little button here to compress which you push up and pull out. It's not gonna be the most easiest thing in the world because you're doing it blind. Just gonna have to uh, go by feel unless you remove the dishwasher. Now, if you remove the dishwasher, this repair becomes a lot simpler. But in this particular case, we really can't remove the dishwasher. Just the way that it's installed, it would require a lot more work. Comes to carpentry-wise, we'd have to remove some of the floor and whatnot. I'd recommend wearing a long sleeve shirt when you do this, something tighter. Just because you're reaching around, you don't want to cut your arm on any of the metal or anything down there. Always make sure the power is shut off to the unit before reaching under or before you even start the repair. Um, I already reached around the left side and disconnected the white with red stripe cord going to the heater. What I'm gonna do next is reach around and disconnect the red one, the red wire going to the other heating element. If you look inside the dishwasher, you can get a better idea of where it is. To make things easier on us, what we're gonna do is, 
We shop vac all the water out of it because this did shut down mid-cycle. And what we're gonna do is remove the drain pump. In order to do that, there's a tab on the front of the drain pump and it goes on very easily. All it does is you depress the tab down and you turn counterclockwise. And the pump will come right out. You may get a little bit of water, but very, very easy to remove. And this is your pump. Um, you can check its functionality by see if it has a spring back action like it does here. So you know your pump is good. And this will make things a lot, a lot easier to get around because this pump here is what you actually have to reach around and bend your arm around in order to pull these harnesses out. And they're not easy to do. Um, so I definitely recommend removing the pump, but just make sure you get all the water out of it first um, or you'll have a big mess on your hands. First two things you're gonna want to uh, reattach is the connections going to the heater. Um, your white wire with the red stripe will go on the left side of the heater. That's the longest cord. You wanna go around the sump to the left. You don't wanna go straight to it or you're gonna not have enough slack on the rest of your harness. So what we'll do is we'll put that one on um, and then followed by the red harness, uh, which is on the bottom. This is the old harness here. This is gonna be your white and red that's gonna go around and up. And this is the red. And this will go on the right. These two are gonna probably be the most difficult to get in, um, but I would recommend doing these first. Your two heater wires, uh, the next two you're gonna to wanna to install is this clamp here. You can see it nice and good with the flashlight, it's right on the sump, um, slides right in, it locks in place. After that, you're gonna have a yellow harness also. Um, just pay attention when you re remove them about how they go back in. Um, they're really self-explanatory and they are keyed so you cannot put it in wrong. Um, so we'll go ahead and connect those. Next, you're gonna put your power wires through the, uh, through the power box here. It comes with a little white clamp on it, which you slide through the hole and it will lock itself in place. Really self-explanatory, you can kind of see it. Um, slide through. What you can do is just push it and pull, and it locks right in place. So now, you have uh, your power wires that are right next to each other, ready to go. White to white, black to black. Uh, and also remember to reground it. Um, there'll be a copper wire at the bottom. The screw. Place that in there and uh, screw it in. Make sure it's nice and tight. Um, after that, what we're gonna do next is, since we have all of our harnesses that are hard to reach, uh, in the back reconnected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this mounting bracket here and we're gonna slide it back in place. There'll be two cutouts in the base of the frame um, that you slide it right into, the lock in place. You can reference back to how you took it out. Goes back in the same exact way. Slide it in, snaps in place. Okay, if you remove the drain pump uh, to, to do the repair, which is highly recommended if you do not remove the dishwasher, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert the pump back in. Um, it's basically just gonna go in and turn. It's about a quarter inch turn, and uh, you want your harness where it plugs in right to the front like this. You'll be able to see it uh, goes to tighten in, it's just uh, go clockwise, and it'll lock in position. After you install the, the drain pump, and what you can do is reconnect the brown harness that goes to the drain pump, uh, and then you can follow up and reconnect all the other harnesses that are up front. The longer brown harness that's also keyed will go to your water valve over here. Nice, just push it in. You got your red and your blue with red stripe. Those plug in with the red and the left.
Kind of just got to feel up under the frame there and you'll feel where they go. Now, if you do run into any problems and not remember where the wires go, you can always uh, refer to the schematic. Um, it will have the color codes of the wires and where they go and what they connect to. Um, or if you have any questions, if you supply your model number to us, you can always ask us questions on appliancevideo.com. And last, you can hook up your two red harnesses. Uh, I took the micro switch out, which is here and here. This actually goes to your float switch. Um, you just wanna reinstall that and the white casing below. So what we'll do is reinstall this micro switch. Goes right into this housing here. It is key, there's two little rods here that go out and go right into this hole here. The harnesses actually point down. Slides in, just like that. And you have your piece here, which also is keyed. I have the hole there. Stick that in right above, right above the micro switch. and it goes under. This is what goes to your float switch here, which protects your dishwasher from overfilling. Then what we'll do from here is reconnect the brown harnesses. Make sure to hold your finger on this because it could fall out. So run your wires right through the keyed spot here, up and in. The orientation of them does not matter. Just make sure they're going on the harness nice and tight. Which these are. And after that, what you wanna do is make sure it's in there nice and tight and shut this, which will lock, lock into place, keeps that, that micro switch in place so that it does not move. It's a little harness there. Push, it'll clamp right in the spot there. And that part is done. What you'll do next here is reapply this bracket here, two keyed holes, and they just slide right in. Okay, what we're gonna do is wire it back for power. The breaker is still off. We keep it off for obvious reasons. Uh, we'll do is white to white. Sometimes these are kind of difficult to catch. Um, you just want to make sure they're on there nice and tight. You do not want to lose connection. It will arc uh, and you'll get intermittent power to your dishwasher Which is not good for the control board or anything else if you turn it off and turn it on every time it's vibrates All right, that's on there nice and tight give it a little tug Then we'll go black to black here Those are on there nice and tight. So what you want to do is just angle them back, push them up out of the way. Now that you are moving these, you will want to make sure they're tight again. Push them right up in there. Give them a little pull, which they're nice and tight on there. After stuffing those back in there, what you'll do next is your ground here. This one can kind of get a little tricky sometimes because of the, the copper line. You just have to angle it in there just right. Uh, and this is the same screw that was originally removed earlier. Um, this is just a Phillips head screw. 
Nice and tight on there. See how that's on there? Nice and tight. Give it a pull. Give it a tug. Doesn't move. You want that extremely tight. Um, and then after that, what we can do is replace this restrictor plate here, just like it was before. This one actually is not a Phillips head screw, and this particular one, I mean, it is actually a star bit. All of them do not have this. Some are quarter inch, some are Phillips, some are this torque here. Uh, basically, just line it up, screw it in there nice and tight, and that part of it is done. After this, you do have uh, another ground wire here that you removed earlier. That, that can go back on also. Uh, the other ground, this, well, this particular one is actually a quarter inch. Make sure it's in there nice and tight, which it is. After this, what we're gonna go on to next is reinstalling the top part of the harness. Um, this will actually go to your control board, your main console, um, and also your dispenser, which uh, the dispenser we can do now, simply lift up the flap. Um, you have a little red, red casing here in which this goes into. Um, it's a brown wire, pretty obvious one, which, which one it goes to. Make sure it locks in place, nice and tight, that's done. So what we'll have next is reattaching the door lock, reinstalling the bimetal fuse, um, and then your harnesses that go into the control board. At the beginning of the video, we showed you how to put the new console, new control board, and door latch back together. Now, if you want to refer back to that part, and what you'll do is simple plug and play here. We're gonna first hook up our door latch here. It's gonna be your tan and your black with white stripe wires. Those are on nice and tight. Next, you can do this in any order. It doesn't matter which order you do it in. Just in this case, I'm gonna slide in my, my bimetal to the, to the holding block that it has there. Holds in there nice and tight. Now again, just like uninstalling them, to reinstall them, you will have to pull the control board out. Uh, it's just got the tips here on the end. Um, just only you only have to do this in order to reinstall the brown and the yellow harness. If you look close on the board, it actually says yellow on it, and that's where this goes. It also references it here of the different colors. Because on some models, it does have different harnesses that go to it, but it does say what color goes in each particular slot. You just simply slide them right in there. And very simple. Next, you got your two black harnesses here. One has four prongs, the other one has three. So you cannot mix those two up. Push right in, make sure it's in there nice and flush. Same with the second one. These aren't gonna have any type of click or locking aspect in them. You just push them down all the way. And then you can just slide your board right back in. Push down, which will lock, you'll hear it. Nice and tight. Now, after all these wires and all the harnesses are hooked up, replacing the wire harness is complete. Now it's just reassembling the main console here, the front panel and the bottom panel, and then just running it and checking for, um, for leaks and um, just make sure the functionality is, is, is still right. All right, now we're gonna reinstall the new console and the front panel. Um, the easiest way to do this is just to pull the door open a tad bit here um, and just line it up. You got your door latch here. Um, it's almost like a wedge and you just slide it right in here to the middle. Um, which you'll see how it lines up actually. Um, this will not stay in place without screws, but it's best to line it up first. 
and make sure it's in there nice and flush. Now this part can be a little tricky because you do have to hold, uh, hold it together and hold it on the top. What you can do is uh, your door latch actually has two long torque bit screws here. Um, you can insert those a bit first, but you don't want to do it all the way because these screws actually go through the door latch into the, the front panel. But if you hold those there, it will keep it attached somewhat before you reinstall this door here. Putting the new door on, uh, putting the uh, the front panel on, um, you just have to slide it down, same way you took it off. Can be frustrating. Sometimes it is easier, it's just holding this thing here. Sometimes if you have two people, it will make things a bit easier. If you have a magnetized bit of some sort, it'll be a lot easier on you. Once you get one or two of them in, it definitely makes them all the better. Um, these are torque bit screws. Got them lined up, get one in there to hold it on. And this is gonna make all the difference. Once you get one of them going, you get them set up and they are, makes things a lot easier. Now your two long ones will go through the door latch at the top. But all the other ones are the same length and they will go around the whole unit. And what you can do after you get a few in, take a look at it and make sure it is flush. It's flush with the control panel here, which it is in this case, um, because sometimes it can line up wrong, your, your screws can go in, but uh, these bottoms, they don't latch in correctly. Um, so just make sure of that before you install all the screws. All right, the last few things we'll have to do is just uh, replace the bottom panel, um, turn the power back on and run a couple tests. Uh, make sure it's not leaking, make sure you know all functionality is complete and it's uh, functioning properly. Um, and your repair will be complete.